My name is Mario van den Ende. I am a web architect over at Ida Media Foundry. We are part of the Explore Group, uh, which is a Kronos uh, company. And uh, I am obligated to say that we are also hiring. Um, this is actually a talk that I, uh, that I did together with uh, Ben Vermeers uh, at DevOx uh, last year. And um, yeah, I wanted to uh, give this presentation again because I thought it was you know, really cool um, to show it uh, to you guys. What is Polsky? What is Polsky? All right. Um, so yeah, uh, this presentation was about image recognition with deep learning from prototype to production, yeah, of course, and we can all read the title. Um, but what Ben did, um, he built uh, a piece of machine learning that could recognize what people were wearing and give um, alternatives to that pieces of clothing. Um, and they asked uh, Ida Media Foundry to build a front end uh, for that application. Um, but we took it one step further um, and we um, implemented a, a way to use a Microsoft Kinect. Um, I'm going to skip Ben's part. Um, so what we've built, yeah, it could recognize it was a blue shirt, a red shirt, or a suit with a tie, stuff like that. And then, uh, I don't know anything about neural networks. This is Ben's kid. <laughs> um, a watermelon. Yeah, all right. So, um, this is my part, adding the interface. And I started with this guy. Um, so if you don't know who this uh, person is, this is not a real person, but this is Tony Stark. Uh, Tony Stark is a, a billionaire, a philanthropist, arms dealer, and he is also Iron Man. Um, so what I was intrigued about is um, the way that he uses technology and interact with that technology um, which is actually not there. For example, he holds in his hand a hologram, and I uh, was thinking about how can I build real life stuff just like that with uh, hardware that is affordable to me, because I'm not a billionaire yet. And um, <laughs> with the hardware that was available right now. Um, so I did some research, and um, yeah, you'll see the result in a minute. I was also interested in the way that he interacted with, for example, holograms. How do you, uh, for example, um, enlarge things? How do you rotate things that aren't really um, things you can touch? So uh, yeah, I immediately was a fan of the whole uh, Iron Man franchise, and still am, of course. Um, these are all the uh, pieces of hardware that I've tested. Um, from different manufacturers, but the one that actually caught my eye the most was the Microsoft Kinect, the version 2, not the version 1. Uh, the version 2, because it has a lot more features uh, to hook into. So for example, um, it can measure a person's uh, body up to 4.5 meters, and from half a meter, um, it can track up to six bodies, so six people can be in front of the camera and it can distinguish uh, all, all six of them. Uh, it can track up to 25 joints, which is actually really important um, for another project that we did. Um, that, uh, for example, if you have, um, for example, you go to um, a shopping mall or something and you go uh, clothes shopping, um, you step into uh, the shop and you see a pair of t-shirts or pants that you like, but not the color or something, then um, you can grab the, the piece of clothing, step into, uh, I don't know how you say it in English, the and then the application can read your body and um, map the other variants of clothes on your body. For example, if you have the t-shirt on and you stand in front of the mirror, you are wearing a white t-shirt or a red t-shirt or you can swipe and it changes color. Uh, and if you turn, the t-shirt will uh, turn, the pants will turn and stuff like that. Um, it can only also do um, hand tracking. 
Um, for example, you have your, your hands open, closed, and then uh, the, the lasso tool, um, which is handy if you want to create um, a draw application or something. It can go up to 30 frames a second, which is more than the uh, person's eye can, can uh, register. Uh, it can measure depth, so you can actually distinguish people that are in front of each other. And it can do face tracking and emotions. Now, I haven't played with that yet, but that's also something that uh, I was interested about. So, uh, yeah, uh, I wanted it, I bought it, and we have, uh, I think, three or more at the office uh, at the moment to play with. So basically, this is my setup. We have a Microsoft Kinect, the version two, and the dev kit. The dev kit is actually those uh, little boxes and wires that are underneath the, um, uh, the Kinect. Then we have a high-end gaming PC, a Wi-Fi cable, and um, a monitor that we can put in portrait mode. So we have the hardware, all right. Next, getting the data and my first Hello World application. But how do I get that data into my application? Now, I'm a front-end developer, and the only technology or um, things that I know are HTML, CSS, and J, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, so it was obvious that I would use ES6 with uh, React, Webpack, and a Babel transpiler. But then I needed something for my backend because I wanted the Kinect to, to connect to a, a local host or a server somewhere that other people could uh, hook up to, uh, into so that we can build uh, different uh, applications and only use one um, Microsoft Kinect at that time. So, being a uh, front-end developer or a web architect or whatever web thing you are, the most obvious choice would be to use Node.js. And I was hoping and praying and all the other things that there would be someone crazy enough to already build a uh, Node module for that. So I went looking on the internet and um, thank you God there were two crazy people uh, already um, created uh, a module for that. Um, actually, the second one is a fork from the first one, so we went up using the, the first one. Uh, and the only difference is that the second one uses a different edge. Now, an edge, if you don't know what an edge is, it uh, connects two nodes on your system. So you have your uh, Node.js environment, and you have, for example, a .NET environment. Um, basically, what, that, what an edge does is it creates a bridge from your uh, Node.js to that environment. Basically, this means you can write functions or drivers or something that hooks up to a piece of hardware, and you can pass it to your Node.js. And for example, if you need to take a picture or record sound or something like that, you can read your stream from uh, a .NET environment into your Node.js and pass it along to your uh, front-end. And that's basically what we did. So in our case, we had to run C-sharp commands from Node.js. Awesome. This is actually the only piece of code you'll need to get uh, up and running to create a Hello World up world application and to start tracking uh, bodies in um, yeah, your front-end application. So you instantiate your Kinect. Um, if the Kinect is opened, which means if all the lights are on, you are registering. And then you can start hooking up to, uh, for example, a body frame um, or get a webcam feed or depth feed or infrared or stuff like that. But now we are just tracking bodies. Um, and after five seconds, the Kinect closes off, and um, that's it. Um, the console log just outputs the information of the body that has been tracked to the console, and um, you can start seeing this result. And this is basically what we get uh, if we look at the console logs. And this is actually the information that you can start to play with. Um, so you have your body index, are you being tracked or not, the hand states, and all the joints, so uh, all the 25 joints 
you can uh, you get the X the Y and Z orientation is the person turned is the hand closed stuff like that so for example um, the hand is closed, the lasso tool, the hand is not tracked, for example, if the, it's behind your back or something like that, open or unknown. Um, so yeah, the hardware, we checked it, we got the data into our application, all right, and now we can start creating an awesome app during a sunny vacation in Italy, because yeah, I'm a developer. Um, so, the idea was to actually create an airplane in the browser that I could control with my body without touching a mouse or my MacBook and standing at a distance from my screen. So, what are the steps to take? I need to learn 3.js. Um, so, 3.js is a 3D library. If you don't know it, it's very, very powerful. Um, what it does, it, it uh, enables you to start working with geometries like triangles, circles, uh, planes, uh, also use lighting, uh, uh, different camera angles, and you can implement or load in your own 3D objects like, for example, from Blender, Max, Maya, doesn't matter. And I, I just stole an airplane from the internet. Um, get the data from the Kinect into the app, yeah? that was already working uh, on, the, on the server, but now I had no bridge from my front end to my back end. So that was something that I had to tackle also. Um, map my body's coordinates to, from the real world into the digital world. Um, that was something that I, could, uh, that I needed to tackle. So putting it all together, my idea was I had to draw the skeleton data into a canvas. I could do it because I had all of the joint information, all the X, Y, and Zs. Uh, I needed to place the airplane into a 3D space and just make it fly. So this is something that I had in mind. So we have clouds, we have the 3D object, and the little stick figure in red is actually um, me in red dots. Um, and I think this is the movie, yeah. So this is me standing on my terrace in Italy, surrounded by tens of others of people watching me do this. Um, and then, yeah, I, I was actually very um, enthusiastic. My girlfriend was sitting next to me reading a comic book and I was like, yeah, 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 it's working, it's working. And she lowered her comic book and like, what, what are you doing? And then I explained everything to her. And yeah, then um, she just kept on reading. She wasn't that really that interested. Um, but basically, this is my proof of concept. Um, I hooked up a Kinect to an environment that it wasn't built for. Um, I got the data, thanks to other peoples of the community, but we changed a little bit into the C-sharp code, because you can uh, check it out and uh, do uh, changes. Um, I created a bridge from the server to the front end to read the data, and um, yeah, the rest is uh, actually history. But if you look at this diagram, it's actually very simple how this, uh, this is set up. So you have your Kinect, it runs on your local host 8000, um, and every number of seconds, you can uh, change the number of seconds, you emit, for example, uh, the body frame event. And you pass along the data, and the data is the number of people um, or bodies being tracked, or the depth, or the image data, or something like that. It's a JSON format. It's being sent over uh, a socket, and then the front end listens to uh, the body frame event sent over that socket. And that's it, basically. Um, this is the code that is actually drawing the, the little stick figure. So every join type is a little um, red square, um, and you read you just go over the bodies, read all the properties, uh, and pick out all the joint types that you need. Update the hand state for the left hand, the right hand, because um, it draws a circle in green, in uh, red, uh, or something, if it's closed or open. Um, and then the most important one is the elbow state. So um, 
I use that function or use the, the, the state of the elbows to actually determine if the plane goes to the left or to the right. So if my, um, if my, uh, my right elbow is higher than uh, the, the joint of my torso, I will go like this, and then else, yeah, I would go the other way. Because, yeah. Um, it's it's as basically as simple as that. Um, now, we use this, um, this proof of concept to actually build the uh, clothing analyzer. And the difficulties that we faced were, yeah, what is, for example, what is a gesture? And I, started, I started the presentation with um, how Iron Man interacts with all of this uh, technology, but how do you, for example, if you're standing several feet away from your, uh, your computer, how do you represent a click? How do you um, manipulate the data that's on the screen? And that's something that you have to think about. Um, and how do you translate this to code? Um, for example, a mouse click. Is a mouse click, um, for ex you have an element on, on your page, a button, uh, which is the most obvious one. Is it if you hover over it for a number of seconds and then this little circle gets filled and if it's filled, you, you did a click? Is that a good user experience? I don't know. Another gesture was if you hover over it and you close and open it, is that a click? Do people know intuitively that it works that way? Now, the only thing to tackle this was to just ask random people at the office to stand in front of the, the camera and just try it, do it, without giving them any explanation. Um, and then that ended up in something that I call the Beyonce. So they were all like starting to tap into midair, trying to push a button. And then um, we ended up going with the circle uh, growing and growing. And when it reaches 360, then you did a click. But everyone was actually trying to push things that weren't there. Um, so the clothing analyzer, the version one, um, we knew how to code the gestures. Um, we measured the distance from joint relative to the center joint. Um, for example, if you have your right hand, if, uh, if it passes this point, you did a swipe to the, from my point of view, to the, to the right and to the left. So um, basically, it's, it's, it's just math. Issues faced. Was the UI intuitive enough? Um, yeah, the, the app started lagging after a couple of minutes. Um, it's because the, the Kinect was so fast that our code wasn't fast enough and the new event or the new um, body frame um, event was already there and our code wasn't finished rendering yet. So uh, yeah, our app just blew up and we had to reboot every time. Um, the third-party libraries couldn't be wrapped in an Electron app. Um, does anyone know what Electron does? Yes. Nice. <laughs> um, basically, it, it um, wraps, for example, a React or an Angular or whatever application um, into a standalone application, an Exe or a DMG. Um, and then it runs like a piece of software. Um, the version two, the, we loaded the Kinect into a separate worker JS. Uh, it still sent body frames. Uh, we mimicked it like it was a webcam and we took control over the frames per second instead of listening to the color event uh, and that fixed a lot of our bugs. And we had to rebuild the Kinect binaries to the specific Electron build. Um, that was also something that uh, took quite some time, but um, yeah, thank God for Google and Stack Overflow. Um, 
And this is actually how the, the Electron app uh, looked like. So Electron spawns up a node environment. It spawns up um, a Chrome web browser, which just runs your application. And then a bridge gets automatically built between the two of them. And then, of course, yeah, there's your, uh, your Kinect, of course. And then um, the application, if you stand in front of the, of, of the camera, there's a button to press start. There's a countdown, three, two, one, and then a picture is taken. The camera takes the picture. It gets uploaded to, uh, to Amazon. There, the whole image learning thing runs, and it says, or sends back, these are the variant pieces of clothing um, based on what you are wearing. Um, so these were uh, a couple of mock-ups. You had to specify your gender, uh, a little how-to, how to navigate, swipe left and right. Um, and then, if you see that screen, you, you could start swiping left and right to change um, you know, the, the piece of cloth that, that has been shown there. Um, and then a thank you, and was this, were the results accurate, yes or no? Um, this is actually still a, a working example at um, Home of Retail, which is a, a floor in uh, a building in Antwerp, which shows all the latest um, development things in, in retail, um, like shops or clothing, um, smart appliances like fridges, uh, stuff like that. And this is actually a, a, a proof of concept that is still uh, standing there. Um, yeah, this was a, a thank you page. Um, of course, my, I had to thank my girlfriend because uh, yeah, while she was packing her, her, uh, her suitcase with all of her bathing suits and slippers, I was packing my Mac and my, uh, my, my iPad and, and, and stuff like that. So um, the other ones are Marco Lambrex, which is a colleague of mine who actually built a, the clothing analyzer based on what I built before. And then Laura um, and Asit, also colleagues of mine who are creative geniuses and everyone who tested. And there's also one more thing. If you know um, of, or have seen Iron Man, you all know who Jarvis is. Um, we are working on it, or I'm working on it, with, uh, together with uh, Matthias Christians, who is my colleague. Um, this is also uh, an in, in trade internship. Internship. Um, we send in. Um, and if you were interested or had the chance to pick uh, this one, you could uh, help us out over at IDA. Um, it's still vacant, so uh, maybe if you change your mind, you're more than welcome. Um, so yeah, we are hiring, and I am yeah, Mario van der Leyen, IDA Media Foundry. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah, I knew you would be blown away. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stephen, where is it located? Yeah, if you if you Google it, then it, it yeah. So basic basically, what what that is? Um, we have the opportunity for uh, for customers of uh, Kronos Explore Group um, to. Uh, to take the customers with us to that floor and see what we can actually build for them. Um, like uh, the Internet of Things, smart fridges, stuff like that. Um, so I, what, what my purpose was in this whole story is um, that being a web developer or a web architect, if you know JavaScript, if you know Node.js or stuff like that, um, don't be fixed on creating websites or web apps. You can play with these things. It's not actually that hard, um, and you can do so much with it, uh, and it makes the whole um, web development scene a whole lot more interesting. So, thanks. <laughs>